Okay, so it's not like it's an uncreasable shoe, but after a few weeks of wearing in the Nuno from Idris, I finally realized what was so unusual about this particular premium white calfskin sneaker, and that was that the leather hadn't creased. And after a bit more time of wearing these shoes, I've been wearing them for about a month now, a little bit of creasing on these shoes. They're not invulnerable, and they definitely need a bit of like white shoe cream as well. I, all the guys out there, when they review shoes like this, they only review them when they're brand new and sparkling white. I like to actually wear them in before I actually review them. But let's look at these competing brands I've also got, right? All the white shoes of white shoes. I got here Oliver Cabell, Coyer, and Common Projects, the OG, the really big fish in this sort of niche in the industry. All of them Italian leather, premium white sneakers, Margam soles, but you check them out on the white, they've all been creasing pretty significantly. They're very not uncreased relative to the Nuno. And the reason for that, I'm Nick from Stridewise, by the way, this is like my YouTube channel and stuff. The reason why the leather hasn't creased so much on the Nuno is because A, they make the shoes to order. So you have to wait a little bit to get them. Yes, but it means they haven't been sitting in a warehouse for a while. The leather's been drying out, that sort of stuff. You get them really, really fresh. And it's also because the leather is remarkably thick. So the leather in the Nuno is 1.9 millimeters thick. Now for context, Red Wing shoes, those are two millimeters thick, two to 2.2 millimeters thick. And yes, that leather is completely different. It's from grown up cows, it's tanned differently and so on. But relative to these other brands, Hover Cabells, for instance, is 1.3 millimeters. Koyo is 1.44 millimeters. Who knows anything about Common Project because the company never communicates anything about any of their products. But the Nuno, about two millimeters. And the leather lining is 1.2 millimeters. So that's a really big deal. And you can tell when you're walking around in this shoe that it's like different leathers, thicker. It's like a meatier sneaker than you're probably accustomed to, which really does help the brand to stand out in the market, in the very crowded marketplace of Italian premium minimalist white sneakers. So this shoe, uh, the leather actually comes from Italy, like all these other shoes as well as 10 in Italy in a little place called Conseria Tolio in Chiamo, not far from Verona in Northern Italy. And it's the same tannery that's used by other brands like Ferragamo and Louis Vuitton. What's really interesting about this leather is that it's box calf, which I was really surprised by. Normally box calf leather you only get on like really fancy dress shoes like the Carmina Chelsea boot, for example, which is over $500. Box calf leather basically means it's chrome tanned with an aniline finish. So it holds color really well. It just actually hand paints all their own shoes. And it's also very, very smooth, even though it hasn't been corrected, like sanded down, which you often get on a lot of leather shoes. So it's box calf, very, very smooth, very, very pliable and very, very soft, but still remarkably thick. So it is remarkably tough as well, especially given the price here. I was really surprised this is box calf leather because these shoes are not as expensive as I would have thought. So moving on to the Nuno Soul, if you know a thing or two about these premium sneakers, you probably know that Margum was gonna be the next word out of my mouth. That's the same sole used for all these competing brands. They're known for their consistency and quality. It's pretty resistant to splitting and abrasion and has a good elastic quality, like important for flexing a zillion times a day as you walk. Has a nice heft to it as well. What's interesting about Nuno is that once again, they're thicker than the competition. And this Margum outsole, as you can see, is also thicker than Common Projects and Koya, which is pretty wild. So it can take more abuse. The founder of the company, Jawad, told me that he's a heavy set dude, quote, big and tall. So he, quote, takes very weighted steps and he was tired of shoes wearing out. So he made a minimalist Italian shoe that's thicker everywhere than the competition. Another very curious thing about the Nuno is that they have a cork midsole. That's common in boots, extremely uncommon in sneakers. These other three brands I mentioned basically go outsole to footbed. Koyo has some cardboard in there, but yeah, the Nuno has cork, which among other properties, it's like an old timey way to absorb shock and momentum, making it easier on your knees and your back. And you emanate heat from your feet into the cork and that helps to fit to the curves and crevices of your foot. So it enhances comfort over time. On top of the cork, there's a leather insole, which helps to reduce odor and bacteria and stuff. There it is there. And if you want to even further reduce odor and bacteria and prevent creasing, keep some cedar shoe trees like I just had in here between wears. I wanted to end the section on that note, but I didn't have anywhere to say that this is also stitched construction. So Koyo and these other brands, they're stitched and glued. Nuno, for whatever reason, is just stitched. So there's no glue anywhere. Probably not much of an advantage over stitched and glued besides being like a little bit better for the environment. But stitching is more durable than straight glued on soles, like cemented soles. The shoe is uh, less likely to get holes at stress points like Chuck Taylor's and most cemented shoes. So I always like stitch construction, even though it's a bit pricier. Now the fit and sizing is my main downside with this particular brand. The sizes run from six to 14, which is a very impressive range, 
but they don't have any wide widths, of course, because they're sneakers, they don't really do wide widths, but they also don't have any half sizes, which is very normal for a company this young. Idris was just founded in 2019 in Chicago, but uh, I am a half size myself and I would really like some half sizes here. So I'm 11.5 on a Brannock device. It's like my true size and that machine you measure your feet with in the shoe store. On their site, they recommend if you're a half size to go down. I got the 11, it was too small. I got the 12. It's okay, like, and it's stretched after some time because again, it's very new leather. It did stretch, but my toes are still just ever so slightly touching the edge of it when I walk. Uh, so I would have really liked 12.5, but it seems like a 13 would definitely be way too big. So that's my, that's my main complaint with these shoes. I still wear them very happily, but uh, yeah, half sizes would definitely be welcome. Now, as far as the price goes, a pair of Nuno sneakers is gonna run you $235. So that is about 10 bucks cheaper than Koyo, which they consider to be their main competitor. It's about 200 bucks cheaper than Common Projects, and it's about $50 more expensive than Oliver Cabell. Oliver Cabell, I would say, is probably the best value in this realm of premium Italian white sneakers. The Nuno's actually made in Spain, by the way. These other ones are made in Italy. But relative to all these other shoes, the leather here is just so much thicker and meatier, and it ages better. All of these shoes here, there's not massive differences with leather. I mean, I think the Koyo is like a little bit tougher, but when you sit it next to a pair of Nunos, it's again, it's immediately obvious that you're dealing with a different type of leather here. So I'm actually, I think it's actually pretty good value for what you're getting when you like line it up against the other main competitors in this market. When you compare it to Koyo, actually, they say that uh, you're gonna get in the five year or so lifespan they estimate for these shoes, you're gonna get 21 cents per wear with the Nuno sneakers versus 23 cents per wear with the Koyo. So I guess that's, 10% better value if you want to believe those numbers. A potential bummer with these shoes though with the buying process I mean is that you're gonna wait about two or three weeks between buying them and then being made and arriving at your door. Now some people like that model like you know you hit the buy button and then a bunch of people in Spain spring to life and start making these shoes for you and they're just for you as well right like this particular pair of shoes was made with you in mind so it's like sort of a nice personal touch in some respects anyway and that also helps keep the price down more practically speaking so the company doesn't have to pay for big warehouses to store all their unsold shoes and so on. Idris themselves, they really think that that period of time the shoes exist between them being made and then being worn is really, really important for comfort and durability. So like I mentioned earlier, the shoes are very, very fresh when you get them. Like they think that you wanna get them and start like molding the cork in the sole with your body heat before the cork gets too old and it helps keep the leather from creasing and so on as well. I can attest in my experience wearing these shoes, yeah, they really decrease a lot less than their competitors. So um, maybe they're onto something, but yeah, you do have to wait a few weeks to get them. All right, let's wrap this up with some pros and cons. Why should you consider getting a pair of Nuno sneakers? Look man, the big thing here is that these are fancy European minimalist white sneakers that barely crease. I mean, they will crease eventually, like I'm not gonna act like they're invulnerable, but relative to all the competition you've already seen, yeah man, the leather really doesn't crease that much. So that's like a big deal you should pay attention to. It's a real central focal point of this. Uh, when I got the shoes, I didn't really know that was gonna be a big part of the experience of having them, but after like a month, I couldn't help but realize, yeah, they definitely crease and look better as they age relative to the competitors. And they're cheaper than most of their competitors as well, which is another pro, like 235 bucks for a pair of these shoes. Uh, the leather is thicker than all their competitors and it's cheaper than all of them, except for Oliver Cabell, fine. But uh, nonetheless, this is thicker leather. It's a meatier texture. Uh, it looks better as it ages. The sole is thicker. You got cork in the midsole as well, which is very unusual that you don't see in these sorts of shoes. It adds like an extra nice sort of like layer to the comfort. Um, all this stuff together, yeah, it's it really is pretty good value. It's made in Spain, not Italy, if that matters to you. But all that aside, thick leather, ages well. Uh, I think it you know, winds up looking better than most of its competitors at a pretty good price point. There are really three main downsides with this shoe. Number one, you have to wait a few weeks to get them. Uh, not a huge deal, I think, especially if you like this idea of them being made just for you. Um, but yeah, that is a uh, part of the reason why they have such good longevity and they increase so much is that they get made for you. So they're not available immediately. And that also makes returns like a little bit tricky as well because uh, I actually had to return one shoe when I got it, uh, when it was a bit small for me and I had to wait another couple of weeks for it to get made. So that's a point worth remembering. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention uh, the main complaint I have here is they have no half sizes. Um, now, they probably will eventually. It's a very, very new company, and I don't like to really ding companies a lot for not having half sizes when they're as new as this company. Um, I'll still wear these, but yeah, my toes, they do touch the edge of it just a little bit when I'm walking. I don't like that. I wish I had half sizes. Get them as soon as you can. If you're a normal size, you're fine, and if you're half size, you might find it acceptable anyway. I'm gonna keep on wearing these shoes again, but um, I want half sizes. The last downside I wanted to mention, and I haven't mentioned this yet, but it's a pretty important one, is that this is not quite as low profile and low slung 
as a lot of these competing models, Common Projects and uh, Koyo, uh, to a lesser extent Oliver Cabell, which isn't quite as low as those other models, but still pretty low. So if you're looking for a carbon copy of Common Projects or Koyo, that's not quite this one. It's not quite as low profile as that. It's sort of a, like, a, like a compromise between the common projects and like the chunkier, more bulbous sneakers like a Stan Smith or a Great sneaker. It's right between those two. So you've already seen this footage of me walking around in these shoes and stuff. So you can decide for yourself if this does not look as low as you want it to or if it's acceptable. But for some people, they might find the fact that it's not really, really low and hugging the foot and down low to the ground. They might find it's not quite as dressy as they might want from a pair of premium white sneakers. All right, those are my thoughts on the Idris Nuno. Um, they're not invulnerable shoes, they do need some shoe cream, I know that, but uh, nonetheless, yeah, pretty tough, pretty good price point. Uh, the full written review with some pictures and stuff is in the description below with even more detail, if you can believe it, and make sure you subscribe as well, because I've got a whole lot more boot reviews, sneaker reviews, bag reviews, that kind of stuff coming up.